know too much about the politics side of things, so mm. I think I'm the wrong person. However, the most important question is this. Are we worshipping the correct God? I think that's a very important question because you see, me and you, mm. we don't want to stand before the Creator on the Day of Judgment. That's right. We're going and then stand you before stand before God, God and I'm standing before God mm. and one of us is punished. And one of us is punished is because we either fail to acknowledge who the, the Creator is or we just didn't have the time to, uh, to understand who he is because for example if i if if i talk for example i don't know a tree as my god you know knowing very well that it's not my god and i died on that and i stood before god and god said i gave you life i gave you sight i gave you everything and then rather than worshiping me you decided to worship someone else instead and so therefore i'm liable to be punished purely because i decided to opt out um, worshipping God in the way he should he said I should worship God. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that I mean I don't know what your beliefs are. I don't know if you're a Christian, you're an atheist, you're a Jew, I mean I don't know. I'm um, what you would call a Christian, but I've had but I've said the the term believer in uh, oh it's not East Side Arabic, it's Yesu in Arabic. Okay. A lot of the Arab Christians have told me that's the true pronunciation. Fair enough. Um, An Arab Christian friend of mine has the name Esau, so obviously that's not the name of uh, so you believe in Jesus in uh, Islam. So can I can I rightly say that you're yeah. a Christian? Yeah, if you want to put it that way. Okay, fine, fine. So I take it... People, people, different Christians, if people call themselves by different titles. Fair enough. Am I rightly to assume, because I don't want to just, I don't want to make judgment, am I, am I right to assume that you believe in Jesus as a deity? No, as the Son of God, as the Son of God. Oh, Son of God, okay. Do you believe that he's divine? Oh, yes. Fair enough. We went up, yeah, that's it. He died, he died, rose, he was died on the cross, rose from the dead, and then rose three days later, and then went up into heaven. In okay. Jerusalem, on the Mount of Olives, there's a... There's a, there's a shrine that's for the place where he went to heaven. It's controlled by Muslims now. The Muslims own it now, but they allow Christians to go there and pray. Fair enough. We have to pay a one pound fifty uh, entrance, but that's not that's not too bad. Okay, what is that for? Is that for entrance into? Yeah, the ent entrance into the. Is that uh, the shrine. place where he made the ascension? Yeah, it's called the Dome of the Ascension. Okay, interesting. You know, I've got a picture of it if you like to see it. Uh, after, I don't mind. Okay, after, either. I don't mind. Um, okay. So, am I rightly to assume that you believe that Jesus is part of the triune Godhead? Or do you believe that he I believe is... they're one and the same. I don't believe in the term Trinity. I believe they're one and the same. So there's only one... The first the first creed of Islam, Ali Ali Allah, there's no God but God. That's 100% true. So that's you true. agree with that? Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, good. Because I believe in that as a Muslim. I believe that... Look, I know the idea how can God have... So I know that might seem strange to you, but... This is God we're talking about. This is something beyond our understanding. No, no, no. Actually, I don't find it quite strange. I actually find it... I'm actually quite surprised that you, you acknowledge that La ilaha illallah. You acknowledge that there is only one God. Yeah, but you see, there's only one God. There's not three. There's just the one. I, I totally accept that. Because we as Muslims believe that God doesn't... God is not manifested in a triune nature. You have to so, go back to what the book says. Not look at man-made traditions or how people have interpreted it through the centuries. You know, like your Catholics, Orthodox, Protestants, all these things. No, don't, don't look at that. Go look at what the book says. Okay. It's the same like if you wanted to be a good Muslim, you look at what the Quran says. Absolutely. I, w I would say that you, you, you are, um, you're a half Muslim. <laughs> and what I mean oh, by that, you, okay. you acknowledge that there is only one God, right? Mm. La ilaha illallah. Yeah. But I would then extend the argument to say that Muhammadur Rasulullah, Muhammad is the last and final prophet of God. And maybe that's what something we should discuss. But before we discuss that, we believe, okay, because earlier you said that you believed God and Jesus are equal. Did you say this? No, the Godhead is superior. Okay, when you say Godhead, who, who, who are you including in this Godhead? The Father, God the Father. Only, or are you including the Son in this? The Godhead has been proved by theology to be superior. There's, there's a debate about that. Some think the Son head is equal, but we believe the uh, Godhead is superior. Do you accept that Jesus is a prophet of God? I believe he's more than prophet. I believe he's the saviour of the world. Okay. Now, I know you're thinking, how can you in, believe... In, 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 that, in, in that type of terminology, I've got no problem. Hmm. Saviour of the world, because all the prophets, were they to save the people? 
there to save people from worshipping false deities and, and whoever yeah. follows the prophets at that time, you know, they go to heaven. That's not a problem. But I think what the brother is, is trying to say, is trying to ask you here, is that do you believe that God is the only one who's supposed to be worshipped? The, the father is now the you pray to him Jesus. through Jesus when you when we say our so prayers, say pray to the Father and then you say in Jesus' name. Right, Amen. I see. So what he's saying is he's saying yeah. that we should worship, that we should worship the Father through and, Jesus, through Jesus, and Jesus as the mediator. Is yeah. that what you're saying? That's it. Okay. Cool. In the okay. book of Timothy it says there's only one mediator between man and God. We bless him, okay. not some guy say in the city of Rome who sits on a throne dressed in white and probably gets paid quite a okay. big salary for it. No, no, yeah, no. Thanks for the clarification. I understand what you're coming from. See, the thing is, right, in Islam, it is forbidden to uh, worship Allah through an agent. And what I mean by that is that we do not seek any intermediary between us and the Creator. In other words, we direct our prayers our supplications only to God alone. We do not associate partners with the Creator. We don't make board of trustees with God. There is no sort of like, like team operator between us and God. We go directly to God, or you, you say the Father. We go directly to the Father. And the reason why we go directly to the Father is because the Quran, as well as the Bible, actually confirms that we should go directly to the Father. Now, in the Quran, Allah says in the Quran, Thee alone do we worship, and thee alone do we ask for help. So from that verse in the Quran, which is the first chapter of the Quran, it tells us that we should only supplicate, and our prayers should only be to God alone and not none other. Now, the Bible also supports this. Um, when the disciples came to Jesus and they asked him to teach them, show us how we should pray or show us how to pray. Jesus said, and he, he, he taught them, he said, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, forgive us our trespasses, etc, etc, etc. Right? Exactly. So what we find from this, right, is that when the disciples of Jesus asked him how to pray, they said, Jesus said, only go to the Father alone. So when you have the verse in Timothy where it says that there's a mediator and that mediator is Jesus, I don't accept this. And the reason why I don't accept this is because we got clear verses from the mouth of Jesus that saying that what we should worship the Father alone and when you want help, you should only seek the Father's help alone. You know, Jesus said to the devil, when he was tempting him on the on the mountain, he says, um, he says, um, what's the verse again? I'm trying to remember the verse. When Jesus, when uh, the devil took uh, Jesus to the mountain, and then he attempted, you know, when Jesus, when the that's it, that's Matthew tempted, four, that's yeah. Matthew four. Jesus' is temptation in the world. Yeah, exactly. It's and um, yeah. near Jer yeah, near Jericho. Just paraphrase, isn't it? I'm going to paraphrase. There's other verses where Jesus directly uh, speaks to his disciples and he said, We worship what we know, you worship what you don't know, for salvation lies with the Jews. So, you believe that the, uh, yeah. the, God, the, the Torah, the gospel became corrupted. When about did it become, in Islamic theology, did, did the uh, gospel and the Torah become corrupt? Um, well, not, well, like some, I've spoken to different Muslims. Some say it was it was Paul the Apostle who corrupted it. Well, to, well I, I do want to divert. I, I don't want to. I, I just want to stick on this, and I'll get to that. Mm. I'll get to that. Yeah, I will definitely yeah. touch on that. Um, but what, well, you believe at the time it was perfect. So when did it become corrupted? Okay. When did it go wrong? Okay, I, I'm just gonna. I'm, I'm gonna answer that in a second. Mm. Um, now, just to give it, sorry, yeah. just to give it an overview of your yeah. answer, but we can go more into it. Yeah. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that Allah has entrusted the rabbis and the monks uh, to preserve the book, but the message has been corrupted. So, so the, the message has been corrupted definitely before, uh, after the time of Jesus. That's what we believe. So we do affirm in the original gospel given to Jesus, but not the gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, not the New Testament. No, I believe the word of God has been preserved. But God will not will not leave us without His word. I, I agree with you, which is the reason why what we say is. But when it comes to if the Bible is corrupt, there's different versions. The King James 
has been proven to be the most accurate. Okay, I see. I mean, we can get to that. Mm. But I just want to give you. You see, the moment. enemy has tried to corrupt God's word right from the start. Back in back in the Garden of Eden, what was the first thing that the, that the serpent said? The devil through the serpent said to Adam. Sorry, said to Eve. He said, "Did God say?" So he's doubted. So he's been trying to put the devils were trying to put doubt in the word of God no doubt right from the start. No, what we say is not, so from not, that point not, onwards and to this day, and it's still going on to this no, not, day. No doubt at all. What, what we're saying is the the rab, What we say is that the rabbis and the monks mm. they've been entrusted. Sorry, that's right. They've, right, they've been entrusted to you know, preserve the book. However, the message has been corrupted. That does not mean that the words of Allah is not corrupted. No, no, no. It means Allah entrusted the Jews in Allah okay. to preserve their book. You understand? Yeah. But because of the corruption, the message has been corrupted. Definitely after the time of Jesus, mm. that's when we say that there has to be another message to clarify all the misconceptions of the Christian side. So I'm just giving you an overview. We can go more into it, but we just like actually. To no, to since, since you touched on this, I just want to. I, I might as well just start get into that, and then we'll bring back to the Tawheed conversation. So in the Quran, we believe that Allah revealed the Torah to Moses, and He in. Uh, inspired those revelations to the prophets and as for the Injil which is the good news Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given that to Jesus in the Quran Allah says wa yu'allimuhumul kitab we taught him the book which is the Injil wa yu'allimuhumul kitab bil hikmah so wa yu'allimuhumul kitab bil hikmah wa at-tawrat wal injil wa rasulan ila bani israil right we have taught him the, the, the understanding, the power of the understanding of the Torah and the Injil and we made Jesus a prophet unto the children of Israel. So in other words, we believe, we believe wholeheartedly in those books, you know, because Allah has commanded us, Allah has commanded us to believe in these books. Otherwise, you know what, we cannot really be true, um, we, we, we really cannot be true Muslims if we do not believe or accept the books that Allah has revealed you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded us that we have to believe in these books you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ whoever does not judge by what Allah has revealed is a disbeliever so we believe in the books that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed however 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 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I say Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I mean God. He did not reveal Mark, Matthew, Luke and John. So we do not believe in those books because this is oh, not I the see. books. This is not the books that Allah revealed to right. Jesus. Right. Mark, Matthew, Luke and John. When, when was Mark, Matthew, Luke and John canonized? It was canonized in the fourth century. If we look at the canonization. No, no, if, I think it was before that. If we look at when Mark, Matthew, Luke and John was i.e. canonized or even not just Mark, Matthew, Luke and John. We've got apocryphal books. And some of these apocryphal books were considered as canonical books in the early 1st, 2nd and 3rd century. It was only up until, I would say, roughly the 4th century or um, 325 CE, which is the Council of Nicaea, did the discussion of the books. You know, we had the council. The council got all together and they wanted to put an end to the controversy of Irenaeus and Alexandrius and they want to put an end to the controversy because this was causing... The Alexandrian believers were not true believers, they were into the occult, they didn't believe that Jesus was the son of God. So that... But when was it considered to be a heresy? Hmm? When was it considered to be a heresy? Because, uh, because there were early Christian communities that believed in anything, they had their own books. But who, Absolutely, who? a lot of people think so that it all went wrong with Constantine, but, but there were problems before yeah, that. Yeah, but but he were, became a huge contributing yeah. factor to that. You yeah, but at, the, at that time, you have a Christian religion called Christianity. I know. Yeah, so it was on, up until the full century. To be honest, I, don't, I, don't, I never like to be called Christian. The reason why, the only believers in Yesu Absinthe would be persecuted by the Romans yeah, and they would call them Christian. Yeah, it was a name. That's the thing, why do you want the name? The, the name say someone bullied you at school why, and he gave you a name. Why would you want to carry that name? Well, what I'm saying is the doctrine was not was not official mm. until the fourth century. So that's the reason why you had different churches. You had the Jerusalem church, you had the Alexandrian church, right? So at that point... The Antioch believers, they were true believers. If you read in uh, Acts 11, 
that's your opinion. But what I'm saying is, at that time, first, second, third, they were all considered Christians. But the fourth century was when all the doctrines were officialized. Now you don't believe Jesus is God, you're not a Christian. But at that point, mm. the doctrine wasn't in place yeah. until when you have the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed. So at that time, you had early Christian communities. You had the um, the, the Basilideans. You had the... Um, uh, who else? The uh, Ibanites. The Ibanites. You had the Arians. They were, they were it, early the Arians. Christian. Yeah. They were the early Christian believers, and their beliefs differed considerably to the Trinitarians, the, the people who believe that Jesus is a part of the Triune God. In fact, you had the Arians who believed that Jesus was a human, and they take this from Acts chapter two, verse twenty-two, where it says Jesus. In Acts chapter two, verse twenty-two, it says, "Listen, Israel. Um, listen carefully." Jesus is a man approved by God by wonders and signs and miracles that he done amongst you that you yourselves are, that you yourself know or you yourself are aware of. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that the early Christian community, they believed that Jesus is a prophet of God. And it was only up until the fourth century and it was only up until the developing councils did the belief of Jesus being part of the triune nature of God that is the time where that belief took effect. And as Muslims, I would say that we are here to restore the original truth. The original truth that Jesus is the prophet of God. And the thing is, right, we believe that Jesus was only sent to the children of Israel. Jesus' message wasn't supposed to be universal. And this is confirmed in the Quran. In the Quran, Allah says, um, again, Allah says, Oh, well, yeah, to the Jew first and then to the Gentile. Sure, the message was to the Jew first, but ultimately it was universal for all mankind. You, me, these people here, everybody. I would, I would, do, I would heavily dispute that, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell, do you I believe would... Muhammad's message was universal, even though he was yes. preaching to the Arabs first? Do you yes. believe that ultimately his message I'll was tell universal? You what, I will tell you why Jesus' message was limited to the Jews, while Prophet Muhammad. And literally half the world's Muslim population is Arab. Not necessarily. I'll, I'll tell you. Okay, I believe that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, his message was a universal message, but Jesus's message was limited to the children of Israel, and I'll I'll prove that to you from the Quran and the Bible. In the Quran, Allah says, "What if Qala Isa bin Maryam, Ya bani Israel, O children of Israel, I am the messenger of God. Inni Rasulullahi ilaykum." Verily, I am the messenger of God unto you. Inni Rasulullahi ilaykum. So, this is proof from Surah Saf that Jesus, his message was only for the children of Israel. What if Qala Isa bin Maryam, Ya Bani Israel, all children of Israel, Inni means verily, Rasulullah, I am the messenger of God. Rasulullahi ilaykum. Verily, I am the messenger of God unto you. Also, if you look at Matthew chapter 15, verse 24, Jesus said, I was only sent except only to the children of Israel. And also in Matthew chapter 10, verse 5, um, Jesus told his disciples, Do not go in unto the way of the Gentiles. Don't go to the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? Me, you, my brother Raihan, my wife here. We are all Gentiles. So his message was only specific to the children of Israel. Now, I hear some Christians say, well, Jesus' message was a universal message, like you said. Many Christians say. No, to the Jew first and then to the Gentiles. Uh, yeah, absolutely. However, the problem with that is that there's no. I was, way in, uh, I was in Israel not too long ago, giving, sharing the gospel with the, uh, with the Jews in Israel. Which actually went quite well, actually. Fair enough. No, fair enough. Considering that you didn't get opposition, that's fantastic. If you do, if you go about it in the right way, but you have these idiot American preachers who go there, stand in Jerusalem, shout their mouths off. Oh, yeah. Well, obviously, so they're asking for yeah. trouble. Obviously, we, do, we don't really get involved with those types of things. I know, people. I know, they're, I know. They're headache. They're headache. But the thing is, right... You just have to go back to the Tanakh. The old, that's the Old Testament. Absolutely. The Jews call it the Tanakh. The, that, that's so you have correct. to go to that. And then, and, and then it, there's prophecies prophesying the Messiah all throughout the book from Genesis from, from Genesis chapter one, all the way to Malachi. All the way to Malachi. Fair enough. But may I remind you that there is no verse in the, in the New Testament where it says that Jesus' message was a universal message. I mean, if you can substantiate that with evidence, fine. I didn't believe it was a message to... for me, I would not follow it. 
Pardon? If it wasn't, if I didn't believe it, think it was a message for me, I would not follow it. Of course, which is why we are asking you if you can give us evidence to support the thing. If you have any evidence to demonstrate that Jesus' message was for the wider populace, then I'm, I'm more than happy to, to engage with that yeah. discussion. But as far as I know, unless proven otherwise, I have not seen any evidence to demonstrate that Jesus' message was for the was for the wider was, was for the wider world. As far as Jesus' own words is concerned, he said, "I was only sent to the Jews," and that's it. So Jesus' message was limited to the Jewish people. However, however, and you know what? I could give you some prime examples. I can give you some prime examples why I believe that. The, 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 the New Testament, it was only specifically for the Jewish people. And I can give you some examples, a live example in the New Testament to demonstrate this. You know when it comes to the, the, the issue of divorce, right? Jesus said, right, the only time Jesus permits divorce was in a case of That's right. adultery. That's right. That's right? right. Now, I have a universal question for you now, yeah. right? And I think this will demonstrate why I believe... Well, people do get divorced over stupid things. Wait, wait, well, hold on, I'm going yeah. to get to that. And this is why I believe that the New Testament cannot be universal. Okay. So, let's say we have a woman who came to you, right? Mm -hmm. A woman who has suffered from domestic violence. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, I can imagine. Serious domestic violence. Not cheating. They're both That's loyal, right. Right? right? They love each other, but there's domestic abuse, right? So this Christian woman comes up to you and says, listen, I'm looking for a divorce. I want to get out of this. But the Bible says the only way I can get, come out of this situation is if I, if I commit fornication, right? Or adultery. What would be your advice to that lady who is seeking a separation from her husband, but she didn't cheat? What advice would you give to her according to the New Testament? Right. Yeah. And it has to, you have to stick to the parameters no, of the New Testament. Testament. Thank you. Go ahead. Well, from a neutral, if we were to look away from the New Testament for a second, from a neutral set, I'd just say get away from that. Oh, no, 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 no. Well, this is why I specifically... Okay, okay, okay. All right. Bless you. But this is the reason why I asked this question. Give well, me... no woman's come and asked me for that advice, so... Okay, so, le okay. I'll tell you what, if it happens, I'll come back to you guys and I'll let you Either know. Wait, it's a hypothetical situation. And I'll let you know right? how it goes. It's a hypothetical. Could you possibly give me a possible answer? Just a possible answer, mm. without straying away from the New Testament. Okay. Could you give me an answer within the New Testament grounds, or even the Old Testament, worst case scenario, right? That that woman can separate from her husband, but there's no cheating involved. What advice would you give to her according to the New Testament? According to the New Testament? That's a good one. I haven't read the whole of the New Testament yet. It takes years. Remember, it takes years to learn a book. Probably takes, takes you guys. You memorize the whole of the Quran? No. no, no there no. you go, then it takes time to read No, no, you're right. No, I whether it's the New Testament, whether it's the Quran, whether it's the Talmud, whatever book it is you're trying to read. Okay. My suggestion is to you is this, right? And this is a learning curve for both of us. Because yeah. I see myself as learning from you as well. It's a, it's a mutual exchange. And so, so I think this is something that you could look into. And I will definitely look into it myself. Yeah. But we'll both, as, do, that. We'll both do that. No, definitely. So far, I would use. I would say, so far, I haven't seen any um, answer, plausible answer to that question, because Jesus said that if you marry a divorced woman, you are marrying an adulteress. Now, I don't understand how. That's you, right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Personally, now that's a debate. That's a debate amongst people. It's like there was a friend, like a friend of mine, would. Uh, he got married to uh, this woman who was divorced, but he wouldn't. He would not sleep with her. I think he still does. I don't think he still will sleep with her. Okay. Can I ask you something? If a woman is seeking love, so let's say, for instance, she she seeks divorce, she's unhappy with her husband, and she's seeking new happiness. What does the New Testament provide for that individual, for that lady who's seeking happiness, new happiness? If what you're is, divorced, if you're divorced, you're no longer married, then it's not a sin in my opinion. Okay, but Jesus equates an, a, an, a, a woman who's divorced... If the woman's still married, under, is still married under law, is still married to that person, then I'd consider adultery. Right, 
But if she wants to separate herself from that from that husband out of domestic abuse, for example, and if she decides to seek new happiness, is she committing adultery? Mm. That, is a, that is a good point. Do you understand where I'm coming from yeah. here? This is the reason why the New Testament cannot be a universal book. Okay, that's your opinion. No, it's 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 you're right. It's a valid. It, I think it's a valid opinion, and it's opinion. I think that freedom of speech, my friends, because God and no, absolute hundred percent point taken. I think this is something that you should really contemplate on, and this is the reason why I believe that the, that the New Testament cannot be universal. However, if we go over to if we now cross over to the Quran now, we have a entirely different scenario here. See, in Islam. A woman, if a woman is unhappy in a marriage, and by the way, this whole marriage talk is just an example. I'm not making that the, the basis of my conversation. But what I'm saying is that a woman who is seeking um, a separation from her husband, right, she can seek something called a khula, which is a separation, you know. So, for example, if there's evidence of domestic abuse, by right, that woman can seek nullification of that marriage or she can seek a separation from that particular abusive person, right? Or if the, if the husband is not happy in that marriage due to whatever valid reason, it has to be a valid reason, then of course then a, a man can seek divorce. The point to be noted here, I think the overall point I'm trying to stress here is that, the, 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 you know, I respect the New Testament. I'm not, I, you know, I, 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 I'm not one of those who advocate for um, disrespecting, you know, the words of God, because I believe that there are some portions of the New Testament that contain the word of God. I do believe that. And so therefore, we cannot desecrate, disrespect, or, or, or show any animosity or disrespect to the Bible. I, it's not part of our religion. We have to, as Muslims, yeah. show the utmost respect for the New Testament. We have to. Yeah. I can I just say on a, on a neutral note, you know that woman Hatun, I think she's an idiot, what oh, she does. No, no. She Sorry. doesn't represent Christianity. Oh, no. I know. Look, uh, it is, it's childish, drilling holes in a book, it's childish. It's very childish. Look, my message to Hatun is this, mm. may God guide her, I wish her no ill feelings, mm. right? I just hope that she sees... Well, she's got a chip on her shoulder from, I, from her past. You so. know what I do? You know what I do for yeah. someone like Hatun? I yeah. pray for her. Okay, that's I pray nice. for her. You know, and I and I yeah. and I hope for the best for her. After she was you know? slapped that time, a friend of mine, a friend of mine wrote a letter to her trying to get her to stop, saying that's not the way you do things. That's but not she so didn't listen. We tried. I don't well, think I don't think it's wise to obviously drill holes in any religious book. Oh yeah, absolutely. for starters. Yeah, this doesn't. Not, I mean, I'm, I'm, I love books. I can never do that. Yeah, I, I do too. I'm a, I'm a book lover. If there's a book I don't like, I just don't bother with it. Yeah, I mean, I've got, I've got the, I've got the Bible. Like That's it. I got, I got loads of different copies. I got probably fifty different copies of the Bible. I've got probably about five or six different copies of the Quran. So yeah. But can I ask book you? Book of Mormon, Talmud. I've got it all. I want to ask you a question. Yeah. A very important question. What is the reason, in your opinion, that you do not accept Prophet Muhammad as the messenger of God? We believe, I, I just want to say one thing, and then definitely you can respond to this. Okay. Because I believe that the Quran is the final testament, right? It's like, I, I, you know, I look at it, I look at it like a jigsaw, you know? The jigsaw, That's a good way to look at something. Jigsaw the jigsaw button. is not complete until hmm. the final jigsaw is in the, is in the actual you know, in the final piece. And I will say that the Quran is that final piece because the Quran does solve world issues. It does from divorce, which we just briefly touched on. It clarifies the misconceptions, right? It clarifies the misconceptions of, you know, like when the Jew, when the Christians, they um, say that God is three in one, the Quran, it confirms without any ambiguity that Allah is one and there is no other. In fact, part of our testification of faith is to acknowledge that la ilaha illallah, that there is no other God worthy of worship except Allah alone. So the Quran clarifies that only God should be worshipped. And as for the messengers of God, like Muhammad, Jesus, Abraham, Noah, Isaac, we should respect them. We do not worship them, but we take them as prophets of God. You know, they're, they're, we, we love them. 
We can't even be Muslims if we, if we reject any of them. We can't even be Muslims if we reject Jesus. So we accept Jesus as the Messiah, but not as God. Not as God. But my question is this. We believe that Prophet Muhammad, as you said, um, as you acknowledged, that we believe that Prophet Muhammad is a universal prophet, right? Mm. And yes, you are right. You made a statement that is true, that Prophet Muhammad was born in the Arabian Peninsula. I said in Mecca. Yeah, in and died Mecca, in Medina. I think around 632. Did, did he actually visit... Um, he was born there, in there's the, a story that he visited Jerusalem and then went up into heaven yeah, from where the Temple Mount's right, complex, yeah. where the Al-Aqsa is. Yeah. Yes. I've yeah. walked around the compound where the Al-Aqsa is. Oh, oh there's you been there? You've been no, there? I'd love to go there. Oh, you've, done, you've done more oh, expedition than I have. Mm. Uh, no. Um, and then he goes up to the heavens and in each level of heaven he's meeting Adam, Moses, Jesus, Correct. Abraham, all... No, no, you're right. No, absolutely. Which surah, of which book is that in? Which in of which biography of Israel, is his life? Israel. There's several biographies. The third, yeah, the surah of Isra, chapter 17. Mm. The first chapter, but in details, it's in the hadith. It's in Qari uh, Muslim. Yeah, so you would definitely find narratives of, you know... Um, I'm trying to find a good biography, a, bit, a good decent biography about him. What biographies can you recommend? I've got a good one that tells the full story. Of Prophet Just Mark. go for the sealed nectar. Sealed nectar. Yeah. So that's the full that's story. Because yeah. 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 I've looked in bookshops, they don't have the full story. Yeah, the sealed nectar. Mm. Okay. How many pages long is that? This has got it, I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's, you know it's, quite, uh, it's about, uh, I would say it's about 200 pages. It's written by uh, Saifullah al mahpuri right? Um, he's, he's written a dedicated um, book, treatise of the life um, of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He goes into various different subjects. And I think it's, I, I reckon it's a, it's, it's a great book, you know, um, it, it, and you can really enhance your knowledge on the life of the Prophet Muhammad. But the thing is, right, we accept him as the final prophet of God. We accept him as the final prophet of God because we believe that the Quran was the final testament and it was sent to all of humanity. But it was all the Quran was sent as a guide. It wasn't it wasn't just sent as a book, as a as a book of poetry, you know, it was sent as a guide to mankind, you know, to turn people away from false worship and to turn them to to true worship of God. Because we believe that Part of the reason why Allah created us is because we should worship Him alone. Allah says in the Quran, "Wama khalaqtul jinna wal insana illa liyabudun." We have created the the jinn, um, the, the demon. The, the, yeah, the demon. So you can say, created, "I have not created uh, amen and jinn in, in order that they may worship me." So then, we, on our we believe that the demons were angels that were cast out of heaven, yeah, and then they became the, the demons. A third of the angels, one third That's of the angels. Where we defer, but, uh, yeah, I would say that the purpose of our life is to worship the worship God only. Yeah. The social part. yeah, That's the purpose of our life. It's, um, as it's the brother right. mentioned before, you know, imagine if you all this time you've been worshiping to the wrong God, and all this time you, you have to really fulfill your purpose. So that's the reason why what we what we call you, we invite you to come back to worship God of Jesus, to worship the God of all the prophets. And that, you know, if I, for example, if I was to ask you this question, if I was to give you, uh, if, if I was to give you two million pounds, what would you say to me? I would, it would be too good to be true. It would be too good to be but if I do, if I, let's say I'm very, very rich. Yeah. Let's see, I, I, I just feel like I just want to give I couldn't, I wouldn't accept it, in all honesty. Okay, it'd be tempting, but... If you did accept it, if you did accept it, would you say thank you? Even if you accept it. Even though you don't accept it, you'll say at least thank you. Yeah, I'll just say no, thank you. Even, yeah, no, thank even you. if I didn't accept it. Even if, yeah, but, but would you, okay, now if, for example, somebody offers you two million pounds on the condition that you give me your two eyes, would you accept such an offer? No, I'd rather, rather keep my eyes and... Why? Because you value your two eyes more than two million pounds. Yeah. So why don't you be grateful for the one you yeah. I'd rather, there's a lot, okay, there's a lot of bad that goes on in this world. There's a lot of good, beautiful things that go on as well. Good and bad has nothing to do with whether God is worthy to be worshipped. Mm. So imagine if somebody worships a tree, why do you think that's wrong? Because this tree cannot benefit you, can't, can't harm you. So Jesus, peace be upon him, was a creation of God. Mm. The Quran mentioned in chapter 3, verse 59. It says, Inna Allahi Adam, 
Indeed, the likeness of Jesus in the sight of Allah, in the sight of God, is like that of Adam. He created from dust, and he says, being it is. So Almighty God demonstrates that he can create uh, he can he can create in different ways. So he created Adam without a mother and father. He created Eve from the ribs of Adam. He created uh, us with a mother and father. That does not mean that Adam is God just because he doesn't have mother and father. That doesn't mean that Jesus is God just because he doesn't have mother and father. But it demonstrates God's powers in different ways, right? So what we say to you is that Jesus is a, is a creation of God, but he is one of the mightiest messengers, messengers of God. We affirm that he's the Messiah. We affirm that his mother, Mary, was one of the best women to ever walk on the face of this earth. In fact, many of our Muslim sisters, they try to emulate her life. She's an example, right? However, where we draw the line is, we don't accept that Jesus is worthy to be worshipped. Who did Jesus worship to? God the Father. God, God the Father. The same God that Abraham worshipped. The same God that Moses worshipped. So that's what we call in you to it. So if you accept that, then you've actually completed the first part of the Shahada. La ilaha illallah. There's none worth to worship except Allah. Now we have to prove to you why Muhammad is the messenger of God. And if we can prove to you that, then it shows you the, 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 the truthfulness of Islam. Now imagine this. And I'm sorry to take over. No, sorry, no, no, no. That's no, no. Yeah. In, in, in the cave, it was in a cave outside Mecca where the Muhammad received his first revelation from the angel Gabriel. Yes. Gabriel appeared and said, Free does, Muhammad, you are the messenger of Allah. Muhammad, you are the, and he kept running away. Then they, the angel kept appearing. Yeah. yeah. Did, did, is it true that the angel uh, squeezed him? Yeah. Tried to strangle Not strangle, but the, 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 uh, the, the, the angel gave him, you know, squeezed him. In what way? Like, like or grabbed him on the shoulder yeah, and said, yeah, Muhammad, way. wake up. You are the you are the messenger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because he was asked a question. Um, the angel gave him, asked him, you know, uh, Yitra, you know, oh. recite. Ma, ma ani I know, it didn't. with all due respect, did he, did Gabriel have to grab him on the shoulder to prove it? Well, it's just, uh, what we say is it just happened. So the Prophet, the, in fact, that shows the truth of the Prophet. Because if the Prophet was, if Muhammad was lying, he could have used this experience to say, look, I'm a messenger of God. Yeah. But what's the human nature? If that happened to you, for example. Why was it that his uncle, his uncle Talib, who supported him, why did Talib never convert? Right. Since he, even though he supported Muhammad, no, very good throughout all the troubles when the Quraysh tribe wanted him gone, wanted, wanted to shut him down. The reason why is because the Prophet, because ultimately Allah guides to who he is. So why not, why not Abu Talib? Wasn't he because worthy of it? Just, if I was, he, was, he, was, he was protecting Muhammad. No problem. If I was to give you this bottle of water, and if I present Even you after Muhammad said, no, I will not stop, I will not stop what I'm doing, he says, all right. I understand. I understand. Yeah. This up my, I want, no, you're what, my nephew, and I'll never abandon what you. I, what I'm trying to say is that, look, for example, if I was to, if I was to offer you a bottle of water mm. and I put a bottle of coke next to it, people would mostly go by by coke than water. Why? Because the coke tastes nice, but however, there's harm. Yeah. The water is healthy, but why don't people choose water over coke? Is that for Uncle Abu Hamza? Believe. So why didn't Abu Talib? Because Abu Hamza Abu, believe. ultimately speaking, people people recognize the truth, but they don't accept it. Why? Because they want to follow their culture. So they wanted they, to carry on worshiping, because, because worshiping the false gods. Because accepting the truth is terrible. That's up to God. That's the reason why when Abu Talib was on his deathbed, Abu Talib was, is the one that you're talking about, the, the, uh, the uncle of the Prophet. When he was on his deathbed, the Prophet Muhammad peace him said, look, take the Shahada. He was about to, because he knows the truth was. But what did his people say? He said, are you going to abandon the religion of your forefathers? So he was basically trying to be, basically follow tradition. Yes, be yeah, like, exactly. As they, as they and he was to. convinced yeah, he was that convinced. you shouldn't accept exactly. Prophet Muhammad's message. What's the significance of the Kaaba? It was a pagan, it was where they were worshipping the false gods? No, no, no. The Kaaba, before, the Kaaba is... Or at the a, time of Muhammad. No, no, the Kaaba is a, is a, is a direction. It's a qibla. It's a it's a direction. You don't pray towards it, but because of this, because of the unity, yeah. Because some people will, will debate. Well, let's face the east. Let's face the west. No, we believe in unity. Yeah. So we all face towards the Kaaba, but nobody worships it. Nobody worships the Kaaba. It's like the Wailing Wall. You know, if you As go yeah, to Jerusalem, yeah. exactly. I've been to the Wailing Wall many times. I've oh, prayed there many times. Even better, fantastic. You know, for example, when the Jews last time I was there, I just prayed all around the city on my last day there. I just went to every corner of the old city and beyond and just prayed everywhere I went. 
That's amazing. I'd love to go there. That's a good review. What is it that would stop you from wanting to go there? You're worried about the... Uh, well, uh, no, I like your manners. Oh, thank you. Are you, you Muslim? You Muslim? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But doesn't matter. Your manners is very good. I like it. Thank you. You Christian? Yeah, I am. If they more adopt this kind of attitude... Yeah. I can't be... Hatun, I cannot stand that one. She's oh, an no, idiot. She doesn't represent Christianity. No, no, no. But the way... Let's, let's, let's not talk about it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, let's not talk about Hatun. Okay, let's not talk about Hatun. Mm. All I can say about Hatun, may, may Allah guide her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean... Even though she's, even though she's violated, even, even though she's violated our book, even though she has desecrated our book, now, we ask Allah to guide her. I mean, I mean, because look, what we say to you is this: remember what we said. We said that none is worthy to be worshipped except the Creator. Mm. So we should worship the creation. We should worship the Creator, right? We don't. Well, I don't worship the creation. I worship. You, you act like you say that as if I was praying. No, I'm not going to pray to those trees over there. Oh, oh, so, yeah. No, 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 but the trees are creation of them. That's yeah, it. We don't worship That's the right. creation. We worship the creation. Though sadly, many do worship. More yeah. people these days <laughs> worship the creation. But who should what you, they but, do but, the creation? But, but according to you, who should you worship? Should we worship the creator or his creation? Worship creator, of course. That's it. So that's where we agree. Yeah? So now, how do we... Now we talk about Prophet Muhammad. Now, mm. as a Christian, I, I want you to think about this. There were no Jewish or Christian communities in Mecca. But there were Jews and Christian communities. There were Christian and Jewish tribes in other Medina. parts of Arabia. Yeah, but not Medina. Jewish. There was a Jewish tribe. Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. <coughs> in Medina, at that time, it's called Yafdim. That's it, Yafdim. Yeah? But now it's called Medina. There were no Jews and Christians in Mecca. Now imagine this: if Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him wanted to convince his people to accept his message, why would he talk about the enemies of the Arabs, about Jewish prophets? What's his motive? Depends. I don't know. Is it true that the uh, the Jewish tribe of Mecca, or they signed a treaty with them and they no, weren't? No, the first, yeah, yeah. So let me explain to you. Maybe you wouldn't know. That's not the thing. The first 13 years of his, of his da'wah, of his invitation to Islam, was in Mecca, his birthplace. They were all uh, idol worshippers. Mm. There were no Jews and Christians. The Jews and Christians were on the other side, called Yathrib at that time, now it's called Medina. So, the first 13 years of his propagation, why would he tell the Quraysh? He doesn't believe in Jesus, doesn't believe in Moses. They never heard the names, by the way. Why would they tell him? Why, why would he want to tell them to accept the Jewish prophets? Because you, remember, the Arabs and the Jews, they don't like each other. So if the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, if he wants his people to accept what he came with, why is he asking them to accept the Jewish prophets? What's his motive? Can I ask a question? Oh, sorry, can I, can I just, just add to... Sorry, one no, second. Let him, let him I just want to add to that. I just want to add to that. If Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a... Um, he wanted to make people believe in him. He could have just simply agreed with the Jews and say, yeah, that Jesus is a false prophet. Yeah. Because the Jews believe that Jesus is a false prophet. So he could have just said, and if he was a false no, they're, they're waking up slowly now. There's a lot that are coming to believe in him. So they're waking up now. I accept In that. Israel, there's 30,000, we call them Messianic Jews. There's no, 30, I, I, I agree with you. But I'm saying at that time, the Jews yeah. predominantly did not believe in Jesus. They believed to him to be a false messiah. Exactly. So if Prophet Muhammad wanted to gain popularity That's or it. gain something from this, then he would have easily just agreed with the with the surrounding information at the time and say, hey, the rest of the Jews are saying <coughs> that Prophet Muhammad is false. Hey, I'm going to agree with this too. Yeah. And then that would have raised Prophet Muhammad's status amongst the Jews. And you know what? It would have been easier for people to accept Islam just to the fact that he would have rejected Jesus. But the reason why he didn't do that because Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was inspired by God and he was inspired with the true information about Jesus Christ. That he was the prophet of God and he was sent to the Jewish people. And that's the reason why Prophet Muhammad rejected what the, well, Jewish... the Jewish people, the Israelites, they were meant to be a light unto the world. That's why God chose that nation of Israel to be a light unto the world so that the other nation peoples like the Babylonians, the Assyrians, the Egyptians, the Phoenicians, all these people who live around the Arabs down in Arabia, they could look to them and think, oh, I wish we were like them, they're amazing. 
That's and true. then bring them to, to the creator. That's true. However, Jesus did say in the Bible, the kingdom of God shall be taken yeah. away from you. The kingdom That's only when they misbehave. Like, when precisely. they become the worst of people. I, I, if you look at what was happening at the time of Jeremiah, they were the worst people. So when the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon came yeah. and took and burned Jerusalem to the ground, he was doing God's service. They punished them. They, they went but astray. But they were that point, why would, why would Muhammad... If they hadn't, if they, if they had not misbehaved then or after, that Temple of Solomon would still pro would probably still be there. That's absolutely fine. But, but besides the point, why would Muhammad, he says that he's a prophet, yeah, he comes with a message, he believes it was inspired, yeah? Yeah. why would he ask the Quraysh and the pagans, who were Arabs by the way, they came from the descendants of Ishmael, That's right. why would he ask him to accept the Jewish prophets? Why? What's his motive? Because you remember, the Jews didn't... saying he did ask them to accept the Jewish prophets. Of course, because that's part of the revelation. You have to believe in Moses. You have to believe in all the Jewish prophets. That's right. Yeah. So what is the motive? Do you mind if I just ask... Uh, yeah, you, know, yeah. you said that the Quraysh had never heard of Jesus. How do you know that? Because uh, because the only history that you know of about the Arabian Peninsula is from the Quran. But, but you Muslim. tell us that Muhammad was a traitor, that he went up to Syria. Yeah. And he didn't live all of his life only in, in Mecca. Yeah. Many of the people in Mecca would have travelled around. They'd have met some of the people in Yathrib and other places. They'd have yeah, known yeah. the name of Jesus, even if they didn't know very much yeah, about but he only but he only went on three occasions. And you're telling me of all of these three occasions, he's regurgitating the stories of the previous prophets based upon the three, three cities. Well, I mean, Mecca, he had no time how many people lived in Mecca at that time? No, but you have to prove to us. Uh, please just ask the question. Do you have, I mean, you're saying that they, they didn't know anything about it. Was it 10 people in Mecca? 1,000 people? 10,000? The Quran mentioned they would have traveled around. It, it's, I think, without really good evidence, it's very hard to say that nobody would have known the name of Jesus. Point. Why did none of the Quraysh, why did none of the pagans repeat Muhammad? So look, we know about Jesus. What did the Quran say? Neither you. Wait, 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 do you have any good pagan sources from that time yeah, about what they were saying? Yeah, yeah, but the onus, but that's well, just, no, just a minute, you're, you're saying nobody refuted him, and I'm saying, well, how do you know nobody no, 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 what I'm saying is the Quran mentioned, after the, the stories of the prophets, Allah says to the prophet, neither you nor your own people knew about this, but this is a revelation from God. My question to you is, if you, could, if you can provide me any evidence from the Quraysh that can right. refute Muhammad, yeah. that, that, the, that, the, the, the onus is on me. No, no, the onus is on me. No, one second, sir. Yeah. I don't think the onus is on me because you're bringing me yeah. circular reasoning. You're saying, look, we can prove the Quran is God's word because you know here it says that the Quraysh couldn't refute it, and you can't bring me evidence to refute it. But you're the I don't one need that, to. But hang on, but you can are. Can you that. bring me any no, Quraysh no. sources? Can you bring me any? Croatian newspapers from Mecca okay, in the 5th hang on, century, hang on. Who, were the, who century. were the Prophet Muhammad's primary audience? Well, according to Islamic history, they would be the Croatian yeah. Mecca. So can we find any evidence from Croatia? Well, you tell me what Croatia no, 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 sources there are. No, 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 you are making the act of claim that it's possible, so you can give me evidence. So that's what I'm saying, I've never said it's fact, possible. I'm fact. talking theoretically, when you're talking about history, you're bringing a positive case to us saying, yeah. Well, this according is, to this is evidence for Muhammad because the Quraysh never refuted uh, 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 it. Uh, uh, How do you know? Uh, according to Professor Sidney Griffiths, he is a, a, a specialist in Eastern yeah. and Western Christianity. And what does he say? And he says that there were no Jews and Christians living in Mecca. But I've just said that so doesn't make a difference because you'd have to say that nobody living in Mecca, that no Quraysh no, ever travelled outside. Yeah, so you can give me I evidence. I thought Mecca was meant to be the centre of all the trade routes. But, but my point is... Was Mecca the centre of the trade routes wait, 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 in the 6th century? Wait, 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 wait. The point is this. Was Mecca no, 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 the centre no, no, of the no, 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 trade no, no, no. routes? You've got to let me see. What I'm saying to you is, the Quran makes the claim yeah. that neither you, O Muhammad, nor your own people, the Quraysh, knew anything about this. They never knew about the stories of the previous prophets. So now the onus is on you. Can that you, seems can a you fantastical claim. Right, so that. you can disprove it then. Okay, was Mecca the center of the trade routes? What's that to do with the question? Because if it was, as Islam claims, then you would have had traders coming so all over the place. From Yemen, from, right. from Syria, from India. And so to say, oh, we don't think that anyone in, in Mecca knew anything about Jesus, oh, this proves the Quran. So why did, so, it seems so a ridiculous so circular why reasoning. Did, why did the Quraysh travel to Yathrib? At that time, it was Yathrib, it's called Medina. How could they travel to Medina to try and catch Muhammad live? Say, look, 
he's talking about, he, wait, he's talking about what was this like? Right, right. Yeah. So, for example, the prophet Christian was talking about the story of Moses. Yeah. And his uh, his his defeat of the Pharaoh, right? He had a counter with the Pharaoh. Do you agree with that? Okay, fine. The Quraysh is saying we've never heard this before. So now we're gonna go to Yathrib. We're going to travel see what the Jews say. and see what the Jews say. Yeah, and well, the Jews right. asked him, if so there's a Jewish right. colony right. there with stories, right. of course you go there to check right. it out. So why would the Quraysh travel all the way from Makkah to Medina if they knew about Moses? Because they, they didn't have copies of the Bible themselves Thank to look at. Much. And that's the point. And if they couldn't read Hebrew, then they'd need to go to someone who Thank did. you very much. That's my point. So they've but never it's a non-point. No, it's not. I mean, that doesn't mean you've never heard the name. Okay. The name what? You know, sorry. the name Muhammad, the name, well, sorry, the name Jesus, the name Moses. Yeah. Okay. You're talking about, well, what did they know about? So can no. you find me any evidence? No, no, hold on one it's second. It's not my job wait, to no, find evidence wait, wait, no, to no, prove no, no, your no, religion. No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on. You're I'm, making a positive claim that the Quran yeah, is backed up. It's backed up by the fact that nobody in Mecca knew anything about Jesus. By, by the way, by the way. And I'm just saying, well, look, you say it's the center of trade routes. People would come and go. Yeah. From Yemen to Syria, from but India, do you have any evidence to demonstrate? Do you have any evidence to demonstrate yeah. that it was known at the time yes. that Jesus was a popular name? Okay, but let's go back right to the beginning, where where Prophet Muhammad was actually born, where he was raised. You know, where, where was Prophet Muhammad born, and where was he raised? He grew up amongst people who worship idols, right? So, so, so therefore, the, the popular religion at the time, was it Ju Judaism or Christianity? What, what, was, what would have been the most popular religion during the time of the 6th century in the Arabian Peninsula? Depends where you go, there would have been... Okay, we're talking about Yathrib. There would have been Arab groups, there no. would have been Jewish groups, there would have been Christian groups of different We're types. talking about Yathrib here. Yathrib during the 6th century, so during the 7th century, yeah, yeah. was yeah. condensed yeah. with people who worship idols. You know, this was this is something known. In fact, you could actually What's find. The point? It. I'm going to tell you the point. The, 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 point, is, the point is the only what, what the I'm... only way you can know about history of Yathrib is from our sources. You're not going to find from other sources. Well, here's, here's a good question about history. So, Muhammad is the the prophet of Islam. Yes. 610, 622, dies 632. Yes. Takes over the Middle East very soon. What? Jerusalem 638. Yes. Yeah. Of course, Islam does. So. As far as I understand, if you look at actual datable historical things like rock inscriptions from the 7th century, you don't see the name of Muhammad. You don't see anyone about Muhammad as the prophet of God. We don't need that. Well, just a minute. Yes, you I, would. I feel we've actually people going all over the place. We should go by you know, Because there are, there are lots of... We've actually from the conversation. There are, yeah, loads of there are loads of different... I mean, this is 7th century you historical doubt, sources. Wait, hang on, hang on. Do you doubt the existence of Muhammad? I think that the story we're given today is very shaky. No, no, I didn't ask you that. I said, do you, do you, and I'm sorry to be very harsh, because what you're doing now, you're, you're not being harsh. I like you to be clear. That's good. Okay, good, good. That's absolutely fine. So I'm asking you, are you doubting the historical existence of Muhammad? I'm doubting the historical um, narrative of Islam. No, I, I think there's about holes in it. Islam. I asked about the narrative of Muhammad. Whether Muhammad existed, I don't know. Whether he existed so in the form that he exists. What negative claims then? You don't know. Uh, no, no, you see, if I want to convince you about who Jesus is, I'll make a positive case. But you're trying to convince so are you, are me. Are you who, Christian yourself? Yeah, me too. But you okay. want to convince so, me who Muhammad is. Moses. And, and you, and you're just interrupting what I'm saying. Okay? If I want to make you a positive case for Jesus, I'll give you, make you a positive case. You're coming to me saying, here's why you should believe in Muhammad as the prophet. Yeah. I'm asking questions, and you're saying, oh, where's your evidence for that? I don't need to do it. I'm questioning your evidence. Okay, but okay? what? And if we want to know what happened in Arabia in the 7th century, you should look for datable things like rock inscriptions, like coins. You don't look at your know, 8th century you copies of the Quran. I highly recommend you type Sibios. And he affirmed there was a man called Muhammad. And what did he say? What did he yeah, say? Yeah, he affirmed that there was a man called Muhammad. Well, I mean, the Arabian Peninsula. There's I many think, people who are Muhammad. Respectfully well, speaking, there's many well, people who are Muhammad. Whether or not he's a prophet or not, but I accept that he's. Yeah. I'm sure. But what do we I know about? Okay, so okay, so okay, so do we know how much? If he didn't exist, Islam wouldn't have got. No, no problem. No problem. You believe in Moses, correct? Indeed. Okay, can you give me any archaeological evidence for Moses? I'm not going to find a zilch. I can. So look at the double standards. So so recently in the Dead Sea, they there, found there the remains of chariots. In in the, in, 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 sorry, sorry, in the Red Sea. There are things that you can look at. 
but I mean, to be honest, that's a moot point. Do you believe no, in no, Moses? No, no, no. I'm showing the double standards. Because if you're asking not about, at all. No, no, if you're asking about archaeological evidence... How many years is it between Moses let, let and Muhammad? Let me complete. 2,000 years. Let, let me okay? Let me, so you're not going to be able to find the same level so of archaeological you, documentation. Now you are, okay? I think we've Can really straight... I, I, respectfully Egyptian speaking, I think, we, I think we've... From 1500 I, BC. I think we've so really drifted. I think we've, why do I believe in Moses? I think because we've drifted from the conversation. Because there are historically reliable documents that tell us Which about it. Which documents are Okay. The Old Testament. Why the Old Testament? However, we and I both believe in Moses. So there's no point in arguing no, no, about something no, you both believe in. No, 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 okay? no, no, wait, wait, let me continue. I, you, no, no, you are I mean, saying... There's lots no, of sorry, sorry, evidence sorry. about Egypt no, no, and no. about the existence of Egypt. No, no, I'm talking about Moses. People were mentioned at the time Nothing. of Moses, okay? I accept that. There is the archaeological data to bring out individual people from that long ago is sketchy, okay? But I would not expect it to be sketchy in the 7th century AD. So why do you put your faith in Moses? Because, okay, I mean, why do you put your faith in Adam? Thank you. So we're not going anywhere. So well, let's let's This is the reason why we should get back so to the conversation. Okay. We should really... We, okay, let's take something that we because do put our, our, our trust in, okay? How do we know about Jesus? We know about what Jesus said because of the documents of the New Testament. Why is the New do you Testament know when they come from? Res just respectfully alive. speaking, well, I think we've really source. we've shifted from no, the I conversation. Well, your, friend, your friend is, is answering us. So, if it's a if the the Quran that you trust says that the Jews and Christians should trust the revelations that God gave them. So you believe the Jews and the Christians had their revelations? Yeah. Do you have any Muslim versions of those? Muslim version of what? Of the, the Injil, of the Torah. Can you bring ones and say, oh, we have the real one? Do you know what's the claim about the Injil? What do we say about the Injil? Do you know? I know quite a bit. So but you don't have documents say? to say, well, here's the real documents. Well, well I can prove So what we have yeah. is the documents on which we base no, the translations no, no, of no, the New Testament. What are you doing? It's certainly reasonable. What Not at all. Okay, so do you believe that the New Testament is the Injil? So do you believe that the New Testament is the Injil? Yes. I believe that the, the four canonical Gospels, according to Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, together they bring us the Injil, the good news about Jesus. They contain okay. his words, they contain Not the Jesus. history okay. around us. Well, you're putting an Islamic okay. Okay. definition okay. of okay. revelation on there. Hold on, hold on. Let's, and, let, let's test and this. And the Quran let's test and the Islamic revelation doesn't come along until at least the 6th or 7th century. So you can't then so retrospect it back on. Not at all. This is linear reasoning. Do you believe you that the first official of John... Back on Do you two, believe the first epistle of John, John chapter 5... Right. Oh, no, no, you're I know that, and I'll come straight back to the second. But it's linear reasoning. You can't say that you disbelieve the New Testament documents, of which we've got entire New Testaments from the 4th century, I'm neutral. because based on the Quran, I'm neutral it in says, oh, yeah. you think it says it's been corrupted. Okay, so, yeah. 1 John 5, go ahead. Okay, go on. okay so, right. The first epistle of John, chapter yes. 5, verse 7 and 8, says that there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. This is the... Um, which of, version are you talking about? Does it matter? Does it matter? In that sense, yes, it does. What? And I'll tell you why. I, I, I'll tell you but why. You tell me your story and I'll, I'll tell you what I know. I'll tell you why I, I don't think it should matter. Because you believe, as you acknowledged earlier, that the New Testament is the Injil. Did you not say this? The New Testament in its original version. Right, so, so when you go back, of course, with any manuscript copying, you get some errors okay. coming in. Oh, so you're, so you're saying that the New Testament is not the Injil then? No, I said it is. Okay, but the first the canonical Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, they are the Injil, the Gospel, the good news about Jesus. Right, okay? okay. Now you're talking about 1 John, which is a letter from an apostle to a church. Okay. So is yes, it... it's the New Testament, but no, it's not the Injil. It's okay. talking about Jesus, but it's not the Injil. So would you say that, would you agree with me that that's not the words of Jesus? Then? Well, it's not meant to be the words of Jesus. 1 John is the words of John the Apostle writing to other Christians in the late first century. Would you, would you, no, hold on one second. Would you agree with me that it's an interpolated verse? Uh, that one that you just quoted, yes. It was okay. never there in the original. So therefore, so hold do you on know one why? Second. Do you know where it came from? No, hold on one second. It came from the Catholic Church, okay, in the Latin version, through the medieval period. Yes, that came in and that was not there. And so when people like Erasmus in the 16th century wanted to go back to the original Greek, which we do today, yeah. he gathered together all the best Greek manuscripts he had, and he made a Greek New Testament, which is the best text that they had. Things like the King James Version came from that. 
and then some of the scholars came to him and said, oh, no, that, that 1 John 5, 7 and 8, you've got to put in the Trinity verse there. And he said, well, it's in the Latin, but it's not in the Greek. The Greek is older than the Latin. And he said to them, if you can bring me a Greek manuscript that's got that part of that verse in, okay, I'll put it in my translation. So it wasn't hey, like... presto, they made a new Greek manuscript. They had okay. it. So those people made a forgery of that verse. Okay, but, right. But, but so, no Christian so have, scholar wait, today, so you have, no Christian yeah, scholar today yeah. will believe that. Right. Well, so you, you, so you don't rely with, on the Latin so Vulgate your, translation. So what's your I mean, do you want to look in, in there and no, see that one John what, thing? What is the earliest? Well, you, seem, you say no, you know, but no, I don't no, think you do. No, no, hang on. What is the earliest? I'll answer that in just a second. What is the earliest? So one John, it is a great question, but let's just look at that. See, look what it says here. So one John chapter five, in this one here, for there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. Yes. And the three are in agreement. It doesn't say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but down and look at it. this, yeah? Late manuscripts of the Vulgates. Okay, so that's Latin manuscripts in the medieval period. 1500 years after Jesus. Yeah. So, all so this time, if there's a discrepancy so there, I'm this... going to take with the old ones. Now, you had a question. Okay, so wait, what wait. is the earliest surviving uh, complete new manuscript? Uh, the earliest surviving ones, there's three, there's the Codex Vaticanus, the Codex Delectandrinus, the Codex Sinaiticus, which are in the 4th and 5th centuries. Okay. So the Codex you don't have, is the earliest? It's the earliest complete New Testament. Yeah. You don't have a complete New Testament before then, because the different books of the New Testament so were being percent. collated together. We do have parts of the New Testament, parts of the Gospels, certainly going back to the early 2nd century, possibly the late 1st century, Things were written on papyrus in those days, they disintegrate. Virtually no originals of anything from that age survive. So it's not a problem. You know, do you know what? I, just, I, 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 I want to. I think what we need to do, right, is go back to the original topic, what we were speaking about. Because what I've seen what's happened, we were respectfully speaking to this gentleman, and bless you, you, want, you know, you, you wanted to uh, sort of get involved, and I appreciate that. But um, I think what we should do is go back to the, uh, the original of this conversation we were speaking about. I mean, we've, we've done plenty yeah. of manuscripts. It's just, yeah. you know, so, Joseph. And it's just Joseph. like, Joseph. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I felt that the conversation yeah, was slightly yeah, 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 you know, that obviously for me, that's a very big problem, and I'm sure well, you, you for you... You tried to take me off talking about the first epistle of John. You didn't sound happy about it. So what do you didn't mean? Knew what you were talking about. I you was the one... to steer me away. No, I was the one that raised it with you. Yeah, but then when I answered it, you said, oh, we're getting off the topic. We need to come back to what we were saying about Look, it. So, well, it's up to I, you. I think we're playing a lot of, a lot of semantics here. Yeah, we are. We are. We are really playing semantics I'm just holding you to what you're actually saying. I know you might not be used to it, but it's fake. No, I am used to it, and thank you very much. I'm not sure how frequent you visit speakers coming up. But I visit quite frequently, so I'm I'm used to being I, have been here I, for a while. I am I've fair enough, it. but I'm used to being heckled, and I was respectfully having a conversation, and then I understand that you wanted to draw some very valid points. I'm not disregarding any of the points you've raised. I think they're very valid, but I think it should come in the right sort of moment in the conversation because what you did, you, li you literally yeah, just yeah, you saw the conversation in half and. Now we were speaking about the New Testament, we were speaking I about asked God. asked a friend to justify a statement he made about whether they were Jews or Christians. I agree with that, but... But then you, you, got, but then you right brought right. up about the New Testament, wow. so we're going to... I'm just saying... It's speaker's corner. No, you can't just hijack a conversation. Really? Yes. Okay, is there a rule yeah, here that says Jesus you can't come in on what? With respect. Actually, Jesus, Jesus challenged people all the yeah, time. Okay. No problem. So
the, the issue is but, the issue is not that I didn't want to communicate with you. It's just you changed the subject. That was that was not my point. We were speaking about God, and you spoke about free something can be a different it's free debate. Isn't it? I mean, you're all, whenever we do that. I mean, you were taking us in lots of different directions as well. No, us down but I was actually levels. no. You were speaking to this gentleman. You came and hijacked the conversation. Not a big, I mean, not not a big hijack. He was just expressing. No, no, no. He should yeah, be allowed to have his friend. opinion. No, no, no. no but how, however, there's something called etiquette. Yeah. yeah. And if you don't have I know this man involved, wasn't rude. I mean, just I mean, British people are supposed to be civil, right? They're supposed to be civilized. I don't think that's contrary. You're South Asian. You love debate, yeah? You're South Asian? I don't like debate. Okay. I don't like people. Why who, did you come down to speak as well? No, I don't like people who hijack the conversation. And no, I don't, and I'm if trying I did to walk that, away. I'm, I'm pretty I sure. I've seen worse than that. If he was coming in, you're still like an old, pulling me back. I think he's like in your way. So I'm happy to walk away if you want to walk me to walk away. Well, we can chat in another time. All right. Nice to meet you. My name is Mark. How about you? Mark Hamza. Hamza, excellent name. Nice to meet you. And your name? Raihan. Raihan. Yes. Nice to meet you, Nice to meet you, Joseph, great to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you. Good do you know what? I, I, I just want to... Just Trust me, that, there's brutal things going on with that. There's a guy, he's an old fellow, I think he's Indian or Pakistani. Uh, he goes in barging and says, oh, yeah, that's me. bad. That, yeah. that, that's barging in and being extreme. No, do you know what it was? I, let me, I just want to clarify something, right? And I want to clarify something for, to the audience or people who are watching this, right? Or, or people who happen to watch this. Is that I am more than happy to engage in any discussion even with this gentleman, I was, I was more than happy to. But the thing is, right, what I didn't want was a complete change of topic. See, we were talking about God and we were talking about some really good things. We were talking about Mecca and we were talking about some stuff. So therefore, when, you know, bless him, I understand he had a, probably a, a burning Hands question. Thank you yeah, very much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Take care. Take care, man. Yeah. I understand that he probably had a burning question and I was more than happy to answer it. But I think what we did is strayed from the conversation. I hope next time to actually have a conversation with him. I would love to, but it just the topic wasn't on what he was discussing, you know, and that that was sort of the key thing here. Anyhow, 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 um, I, I think I'm, <laughs> I think we lost the conversation. Um, all I can say is this. All I can say is this: is that we would like you to look into Islam, and I I was very open-minded myself. Um, in looking into Christianity. That's, that's good, you need to look into everyone. You Absolutely. And I, I, I'm, a, I'm a very open-minded guy. And when I looked into Christianity, there was obviously a lot of things that I disagreed with. And hence, which is the reason why I, I used to come here and I used to question our Christian brothers and see what their opinion and what their take was on, on the questions that I had for them. You know? So the point to be noted here, right, is that, you know, we invite you to look further into Islam, you know, with an open heart and with an open mind, you know, and that's what I had to do and that's what I'm requesting you to do yourself, you know, but if you have are any... Are you from a Muslim family or are you a convert? No, I'm not, a, I'm not from a Muslim family, no. Oh, I you're a convert? Well, I, I was brought up as a Muslim. I was brought up as a Muslim. Oh, you're a revert? Yeah, I will, yeah, I'll call yeah, myself you brought a revert. Up, you I, yeah. did your own thing for a while and then absolutely, you came back I will call to myself, for your parents. Absolutely, absolutely. And I would say... That. I think that's the case for quite a lot of Muslims. A lot, a lot of Muslims probably for a time in their lives, yeah. you know, we're, we're not looking to God, we're doing their own thing, and then they revert. Yeah. The thing is, right, I have a lot of family members who are not Muslims, you know. Um, you know, I have my sister, she's not a Muslim. I have my grandmother, she's not a Muslim. So I have a lot of family members that are not Muslims. But you know what? Our duty as Muslims, right, is to, is to convey that message. It's to convey that message of Tawheed, the oneness of God, you know, to, to tell other non-Muslims about Islam because Islam is one of the religions that, are, that have been misunderstood. It's a misunderstood religion, especially where, you know, the media, you know, you know, people who are misrepresenting our faith, you know, so our duty as Muslims is to clarify that misconception. And that's, that's what it's all about. Really. So, with that, when you mean the media portrays Islam bad, in what way? Are oh, you talking about no, ISIS, no, Al Qaeda? Yeah, I'm just talking about. You know, well, what is it? You don't mind me asking. What do you think of these people when they go around murdering other people? Muslims as well. Muslims as well. Don't go around Muslims as well. Yeah, and say we are Muslims, or they'll kill other Muslims who are not as it devout is, as them. And say, is, you're not Muslim. You're a traitor. You're a heretic. Look, I have one simple answer to you. Yeah, that, in Algeria in the 90s, there was a civil war. 
they used to go into the jihadists said they used to go into the villages and just shoot people who are Muslim and say on, on rubbish terms oh you weren't good enough it is you were doing something it wrong. is forbidden mm. let me make my words clear and for those who are listening to this it is haram forbidden to injure maim attack mm. any innocent person it is wrong the quran completely condemns it the islamic religion condemns it and i do not agree with any of any terrorist organization i stand in opposition against them you know and i want to really make myself clear this is is haram and it should not be engaged in you know and hence this is part of the reason why us muslims come here because we want to clarify what our position is you know and we do not advocate violence we come here we call for peace you know, um, I've so far had a, a lovely conversation with you, and I, I felt that I've had a peaceful conversation. Well, I said talking to people is a lot better you know, than getting aggressive. It's but just next talking, time, to people, talking to people and, and debating differences, in my opinion, is the best thing you can do. Look, when I see that gentleman next time, I would love to have a conversation with him. Hmm. I would love to, but it's just okay. On, you this, on this topic, yeah, we were talking about something else. Okay, but, well, maybe not, but there could be worse people. So I, it's like that fellow who barges in and says Muhammad's bad, this and that, Islam's yeah. bad, that you do. Exactly. And that's and, just and stupid. If, if, there was a, if there was a Muslim doing this to a Christian, I think that's wrong too. Yeah, yeah, yeah because a, a, a Christian and Muslim are talking and then a the Muslim comes and interviews the conversation, you know, that's also wrong. So it's not it's not just because he's a Christian, no. We're, we're more than happy, to, like Dr. said, we're more than happy to speak to him, you know, on a separate conversation. But at this moment in time, we're speaking to him. And, and the, no doubt too, there are some Muslims in the park they don't have good manners, yeah. yeah. And there are some Christians who, do, who doesn't have good manners as well. Oh, right? yeah. So we're trying to be equal here. It wouldn't be fair if a Muslim hijacks the conversation. It's not fair, right? as well. Mm. So I'm more than happy to speak to Mark. So next time, next time, inshallah. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's okay. So, anyway, with that said, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm gonna probably walk around or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but it was an absolute pleasure speaking yeah, to you. What's yeah, your name again? Joseph. Joseph Hamza. Joseph, yeah. Um, nice I, I, I really do hope to speak to you again. We shall. Um, I'm here once every month, so in about four weeks' time. I might, I might come back in two weeks. It depends. Okay. It depends. I don't live in London. I'm from. Uh, I live down in Kent, so oh, I've got oh, from Kent. So you came. You came on a journey. Yeah. Away yourself. Okay, fair enough. Yeah, we've got in uh, Canterbury. We've got a. We've got a number of Arabs. Who, I mean, we've always had Muslims in Canterbury. There's a Muslim there, but we uh, over the over the years because. In recent years, because of the Syrian civil war, we've had Syrians come over, and there are a variety of faiths. Some of them are Muslim, some of them are Orthodox Christian. Yeah, it's fair quite enough. a mixed bag. Okay, fair enough. Okay, Joseph. Yeah. Well, may God, may God bless you. Thank you. And may He open your eyes and open my eyes as well. And may He guide us all. May He guide us all. I can agree. That's something we can agree on. Maybe the Almighty guide us all in the right direction. That we can agree on. Definitely. All right, better. All right, yeah. yeah. That's good. I enjoyed the conversation. I, I enjoyed it myself. I enjoyed it myself. It's good. We, we have, because lately I've never speakers called out all kinds of people. It doesn't matter the background. It's been getting insane over here. People being rude, sorting up people. People are claiming to be this and that, different ideas. I don't. This is one of the few. We're spots going to do a clarification. We're going to do things like this. We don't do this in a lot of places. Definitely. No, I know. So it's, it's nice that we have uh, uh, my family are from uh, Jamaica. Oh, Jamaica. Yeah. I don't think you find a speaker's born in No, 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 no. Not, not, that, when I, not when I last checked in. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you, Joseph. May God bless you. Thank you. Good speaking to you, Joseph. Take care. Right. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahir Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sahbihi We spoke to Joseph um, He's a, a lovely guy and you know we were speaking to him about aspects of Tawheed we were clarifying the misconceptions that he had you know and inshallah I hope next time when he does come to Speaker's Corner I really do hope that we will be able to speak to him again, inshallah. inshallah. As for, what's his name? David? Mark. Mark, Mark. right. The only digital. As for Mark, um, I, I would have loved to have engaged with Mark, but unfortunately he came at a time when we were actually in the middle of a conversation with someone else. And so therefore I felt that he, was, he changed the subject and it wasn't conducive to the conversation. 
So inshallah, I hope next time we have the ability to speak to him. Yep. But on this occasion, I was really fixated on speaking to our brother, um, Joseph. Joseph. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide him. And then maybe next time we can speak to to uh, Jamal. To, to, to Jamal. Yeah, so inshallah. Do you have anything to say yourself? Uh, no, it was just a great uh, conversation. A very respectable gentleman, uh, Joseph. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide him to Islam. Uh, I mean, and you know, like Hamza said, we're more than happy to just to speak to Mark, but we don't like when people interject in the conversation. So, um, so no, it's, we just have to make that clarification. Um, sure. But yeah, take care, brothers and sisters. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Barakallah,